Welcome back to another episode of AFL by Jellyman here on Wednesday, April the 19th. Looking back at round five in review, um, looking forward to the round six, um, and then also touching on some stats, insights, etc., etc., um, for this weekend of your AFL punting. Obviously, an extra longish weekend with Monday and Tuesday's games um, being in Melbourne uh, for Anzac Day, and then also a Monday game between Melbourne and Richmond. But We'll head back to round five. Um, obviously, gather round, I think, a super su- successful round, both for Adelaide and for the AFL. Um, looked like a lot of very good, interesting games. Even the games out at the other ovals um, look super good, and, um, and plenty of people went through the gates there. But we kick off last Thursday with Adelaide versus Carlton. Adelaide 118 to Carlton 62. We watched this one. Um, we actually backed in Adelaide. We had them at over 180. 1.5, so missed out by two points, along with Adelaide playing 450, so missed out on that one. But the game, no doubt, it just looked like Adelaide had it, um, I guess, tied up as soon as they came out. Um, they were more attacking, their defensive pressure, um, they brought all of that that they needed to. Carlton just looked shocked um, and slow. Um, but yeah, Adelaide played that real exciting brand of football that got them the win there, and their forward line, as well as their midfield, looked super dangerous. and. You know, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago that our biggest worry for them was their back line, but their back line seems to be talking um, well together. They, they seem to be communicating, they're defending well, working with each other. Um, all the things you need in a good back line. It doesn't necessarily have to be the most talented back line, but as long as they're working together um, in tandem, um, they can get the job done there. But super impressive win for Adelaide there. Uh, moving on to the Friday night's game, so Fremantle versus Gold Coast. Gold Coast should have got this one done. They were leading most of the game. They were most dominant throughout the game. They didn't convert on a few opportunities, unfortunately, but Fremantle stuck with it, um, and they were behind by six points at three-quarter time, and then obviously got back into the game um, throughout that fourth quarter and then ended up winning 100-90. to um, An unfortunate loss for Gold Coast there. Um, an interesting one at Norwood Oval, obviously. The, the, the ground was a bit skinnier. So a lot more sort of forward going football um, and everything like that. But I think that's a lost opportunity for Gold Coast and we're still not sold on the Fremantle Dockers either. Uh, Next game on that Friday evening was Sydney versus Richmond. Richmond losing 78, Sydney 122. Uh, This one was actually wet uh, towards the back end of the game and Sydney kicked away with it. Um, Richmond defence, I'm not sure if there's enough defensive pressure around the ball. Their contested footy isn't there. They're potentially at that back end. They've got a few players um, who are potentially past it uh, that we're looking at. Um, but yeah, it's hard to put a finger on Sydney, just a well-rounded game. Obviously, no Franklin, but still able to kick goals. Papley set them alight as well. Um, and Sydney looks super impressive, but you know, worrying signs for the Tigers um, early on in the season. Moving to Saturday games, Brisbane versus North Melbourne. Brisbane winning 152-77. to um, This one was just a bloodbath from Brisbane. Um, just really over dominant of North Melbourne. I mean, still allowing 77 points, but kicking 22 20, 42 shots on goal um, is huge there. Um, obviously, a smaller oval out of the Adelaide Hills, but doesn't matter um, to kick a score like that. Um, means you're all over the opposition. Um, not, much, too much, not too much else to take away from that game either. Um, Essendon versus Melbourne. This was an interesting one. Uh, just finishing my footy game and then watching this one and sort of seeing Essendon were just all over Melbourne. I mean, uh, we didn't really. Oh, we sort of touched on it last week with West Coast versus Melbourne. West Coast were able to bring pressure to Melbourne that they they don't cope well with. They only could do it for two quarters, and Melbourne kicked away in their second half. But Essendon were able to for a full four quarter effort, um, and that's what actually got it done against the Demons. Obviously, kicking a score as well, one hundred and four to seventy seven there at the Adelaide Oval was also a bit wet and slippery as well. But Essendon were able to bring that pressure, um, and I think that's the that's the blueprint to beat beat Melbourne um, continually this year. And Essendon sets up a big game against Collingwood this week, which will be exciting there. Next game was Power versus the Dogs. Um, not too much takeaway from this game, just because it was wet, it was gritty. Both sides didn't look great at times. Both sides looked good at times. Defences stood up. Um, attacking flair wasn't exactly there. Um, midfield versus midfield, it was a good competitive battle, but um, we can't too, take too much away from that one. Um, we turn our attention to Sunday's game. So Geelong versus West Coast. Geelong 136 to West Coast 89. Geelong looked like it could have been a 100-point win that first half and maybe took their foot off the pedal in the second half there. Um, but nonetheless, obviously, West Coast just down on injuries at the moment, down on players, and Geelong just made them 
um, looks second rate at times. Um, obviously, kicking a score 89, though, is a bit worrying for Geelong um, compared to, obviously, they kicked 136. Um, but it was all about them in that second quarter um, in that first half as well. But nothing too much to take away from the Eagles. But Geelong looked to have got a bit of their mojo back. Uh, next game was the Giants versus the Hawks. Giants 77-75 to the Hawks. Um, the Giants obviously hold on late. Um, the Hawks nearly had a shot to win it. Um, Himmelberg obviously clutching that goal late as well. Um, but both these sides, sort of that bottom four, bottom eight sides, um, do as we thought with it. They'd be better with the squad they have um, this season and against the Hawks. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, how they go this coming week as well. Um, but as we said, the Hawks are a rebuild, so not too much to take away there. Um, the last game of the round, Collingwood versus St Kilda. Super defensive, super good game. 70-64. to Dacos was exceptional. Um, this was just a really defensive grit game. I mean, both defences held up. Collingwood sort of kicked away late in that fourth quarter and St Kilda came back with a couple of goals late to make it interesting. Um, but yeah, Collingwood sort of all over him in that fourth quarter and that was the difference in the game. Just who was ever who was harder for longer, and that was Collingwood in this matchup. Some key stats from round five: um, Rory Laird thirty-seven, as well as Jordan Dawson thirty-two, Lockie Neal thirty-seven disposals, Nick Dacos forty-two, Merritt thirty-five, and Parrish thirty-four. Sarong thirty-seven, um, Caniglio and Green thirty-three and thirty-two, Warple from Hawthorne thirty-five, Clayton Oliver forty-one, Sheasel again thirty-one, Butters thirty-two in the wet, Baker thirty-five for Richmond. Taranto from Richmond also 34, Hopper 32 from Richmond as well. So although Richmond lost, they had plenty with plenty of players with high disposals, uh, but not making much use of it. Uh, Crouch, that's Brad, St Kilda, um, 33, and Trelaw, 35 from the Dogs. In terms of goals, this is four plus goals. So Fogarty, five, Danaher, five, Charlie Cameron, four, <clears throat> Hipwood, four, Walters, four, Jeremy Cameron, four, Hawkins, four, Stevenson from North Melbourne, four, Revolt, four, Papley, six, Waitman from the Dogs, four, Allen, four, and Waterman, four as well. Looking at topic three, so player and team consistency. So Adelaide, 180 plus total points in their first five matches. Laird, 25 plus in his last four matches. Rankin, two plus goals in four of his last five games. And Rochelle, one plus goal in all five games. For Brisbane, Ashcroft, 20 plus disposals in his last four games. Barry, 15 plus in all five games. Hipwood, one plus goal in his last three. And Rainer, one plus goal in his last three as well. For Carlton, Chera, 20 plus disposals in four of his last five. Akers, 20 plus in his last three games. Kerno, two plus goals in his first five games. Durden, also one plus goal in his last four games there. Collingwood, Dacos, that's of the Nick kind, 30 plus in all five games. Pendles, 30, 20 plus. In his first five, Bobby Hill, one-plus goal in all five games. And Ash Johnson, also one-plus goal in his last three games. Um, and that's all of his three games as well. Essendon, Merritt, 25-plus disposal in his first five games. Dylan Shield, 20-plus 20, 20 disposal in his all five games. Perkins, one-plus goal in all five. And Nick Martin, one-plus goal in all four games. In his last four games as well. For Fremantle, Sarong, 30-plus in three of his last four. Schultz, one-plus goal in all five games. Amis. Or Amos, one-plus goal in his last three. And also Luke Jackson, one-plus goal in his last three games as well, playing up more forward. GWS coming 20-plus, I suppose, in his first five games. Haynes, 15-plus in his first five. Hogan, two-plus goals in four of his last five games. And Daniel, one-plus goal in his last five games. If you want to take more of a look into that one, obviously in the show notes will be all those statistics. Uh, feel free to... Obviously, like, follow, and subscribe on our platforms to see how they, these get rolled out across the weekend as well. Um, but sort of moving into topic four, you know, round six preview. So on the Friday night game, so no Thursday night game, we've got the Dockers versus the Dogs over there in Perth. Um, last time these sides played up, uh, played off, played up, played off. Um, they split twice last year in the finals week one. Um, so the Dockers won 73-60 in that matchup. Um, this one was over in Perth. And then earlier in that season, which was in round 21, the Dockers also won 95-78. to um, This one's a really interesting one because the Dockers still haven't proven anything to us this season. While the Dogs, obviously a tight loss against the Power last week. Um, both teams really inconsistent. Probably not picking a head-to-head -head in this one. If we had to pick anyone, it would be the Dockers as they're in Perth. Um, but yeah, a real 50-50 one here. Um, I'll be looking at Cody Waitman for goals um, in this one. Also, Michael Walters for goals down there as well. Um, 
you know, Sarom, 30 plus, I suppose, was definitely a chance as well. Um, there's some sort of key statistics to look at. But in terms of head-to-head, -head, total points over, potentially total points under for this one. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be sure on a head dead in this one, just as both these teams have been inconsistent so far this season. Um, lineups aren't yet out for them. Next game for the Saturday, so the Power versus the Eagles. Um, this should be a big win for the Power. And last year, they played off in round six. The Power won 117 to 33. That was in Adelaide. This is in Adelaide. So the Eagles have traveled back to Perth, They're back across to Adelaide. It's actually a three hour flight, so it's not as close as everyone thinks. Um, it's obviously close to Melbourne or Adelaide. Um, so we've, we've got the power there to win and win well. Um, Dixon could get a bag as well as Todd Marshall, but there should be some points scored in this one as the Eagles have been scoring points, but also allowing plenty of points as well. So it could go over 200 total points, um, with both sides scoring well, as long as the weather stays well, um, which looks like at the moment it is going to be a beautiful sunny Sunday, a Saturday afternoon. Um, in Adelaide, so look for a big score to be pick, kicked, but the power to have a good win as well. The Giants first Brisbane, so this is at Manuka Oval in Canberra, um, and a good statistic here. Um, I'm just going to get it up to make 100% sure of it, but I'm pretty sure the Giants have lost something like their last six or seven at Manuka Oval, um, and I'm going to confirm it um, just to be sure. Um, let's have a look, Manuka Oval, Manuka Oval. Yeah, so they've lost one, two, three, four, five, six. Their last seven at Manuka Rover in Campbell, Canberra, if I can speak properly. Um, and the weather in Canberra this weekend, which may suit neither side, um, it looks 21 and sunny. So that probably suits the Lions um, as that's how they like to play. I think the Lions get a big win um, and GWS continues on that losing streak in Canberra, unfortunately, which is meant to be their home ground. So... Uh, last season, uh, these guys also played off in round 18 and round 11. Round 11, it was a bit close, 110 to 96. That one was in Brisbane. Um, 99 to 59, that was also at Manuka Oval in round 18. So look for Brisbane Lions to get a big, not a big win, but a good win in that one um, there. The next game for the evening is Geelong versus Sydney. Geelong's first game at G GMHBA Stadium this season. Um, off the top of my head, I think that's right. Um, they won the grand final last year, obviously, Geelong, that is, 133-52. to 52. Last time these sides played off, they actually played off earlier that season in round two, and Sydney won 107-77. to 77. Um, This one's an interesting one because, you know, Geelong are hitting a bit of form coming into this one, uh, but then Sydney obviously winning well against Richmond last week. Um, and we look at this one and go, you know, are Sydney out for a range? You know, Geelong playing at home for the first time. Uh, to be honest, we'll have to look at the lineups for this one and make sure we're 100% correct before we give any sort of insight. Um, but as it stands now, Geelong at home um, are a super strong squad and we see them winning, uh, but it really could be 50-50. Sydney plus line could be also a go. Um, just need to have a bit more of a look into the lineups for this matchup. Sunday's game, so we've got Hawthorne versus Adelaide down in Launceston. Um, Adelaide should win this one with the form they've been in. Uh, but last season, around 17, the Hawks actually won this matchup, 86-54. to um, And they did have a tight contest um, against the Giants last week. But Adelaide, with how they've been playing with that attacking brand of football, um, expect them to go down there as long as the weather's fine in Launceston, which we'll have a quick look at. Um, the weather looks fine on Saturday, Sunday afternoon anyway down in Launceston, so expect a, an Adelaide win there. Um, the next game, which is a good matchup, Carlton versus St Kilda at Marvel. Um, St Kilda won this matchup last year in round 16, 93 to 78. Um, St Kilda also get back Jack Steele, so skipper. Um, and look, Carlton last week were less than impressive against Adelaide. Um, and if they bring that same type of performance against St Kilda, um, we expect them to lose as well. Um, and St Kilda are really impress impressive against Collingwood. So, look, off the of back of form um, with Jack Steele coming back in, um, we like the Saints in that matchup. Gold Coast versus North also on a Sunday afternoon at home on the Gold Coast. Should be fine weather um, up on the Goldie. Oh, no, it's actually oh cloudy. Cloudy on Sunday afternoon, so it should be fine. Um, this is a game the Suns need to win, um, and they have won the last two games against them. Round 23 last year, 114 to 47, um, and also round 12 last year, 109 to 47. So this should be a good win for the Gold Coast Suns, um, and it's one needed that they 
should have got last week against the Dockers. Um, and obviously, North came off that big loss against Brisbane, but we like the Suns to win this matchup there. Um, moving to Monday's game and then Tuesday's game, so Melbourne versus Richmond. This should be a big win for Melbourne. Richmond just looked less than impressive, and obviously, Melbourne coming off a loss last week. Um, and then Collingwood versus Essendon. Um, this will be tight no matter what. Um, Anzac Day games are always tight. Um, so, you know, either team, 1 to 24, could be a pretty good bet. Um, Essendon plus line. Um, currently, it's 149 to the, the Pies, 263. Collingwood 1 to 39, all of that. Like, we think Collingwood will win this one, but it'll be a close matchup, as all Anzac Days typically are. Last season was 80 to 76 in round 19. Um, and then this Anzac Day game was 93 to 82. The season prior um, was actually a round 23 win um, to the, the Bottomers, um, but we do like the Pies in this matchup here. But as mentioned, it will be a close game. Um, so just quickly going over it, so round six best bets, um, obviously looking at the Dogs on the Friday night, if there is a head-to-head, -head, Power, Brisbane, Geelong, Adelaide, St. Kilda, Gold Coast, Melbourne, Collingwood. Um, and then moving into some, obviously, you know, multis in round, um, round six stats and best multis uh, that we'll also get up on, you know, TikTok and our reels on Instagram. Um, so AFL stats for round six, um, Juice has lost its last 12 versus sides in the top eight. Um, Geelong have won eight of the last nine at GMHBA. Um, Adelaide have won their last five matches as favourite and North have lost their last 10 games in Queensland. So Brisbane, Geelong, Adelaide, Gold Coast, 3-12 as a four-leg multi. Friday stats, um, or Friday's, yeah, Friday stats. Schultz, one plus goal in all five games. Jackson, one plus goal in his last three. Liver, 20 plus, I suppose, in his last five, in his all five games. Norton, one plus goal in all five games. 2.30 as a four-leg multi. Saturday, Horn Francis, Alan, uh, Horn Francis, 15 plus, I suppose, in his all five games. Alan, Oscar, that is, two plus goals in all five games. Coming, 20 plus, I suppose, in all five games. McKenna, 15 plus, I suppose, in all five games. Smith and Lloyd, 20 plus disposal in all five games. Combine those six together, 6-11 on sports bet. Sunday's game, so Sunday stats, so Laird, 25 plus, Rochelle, 1 plus, Kono, 2 plus, Marshall, 15 plus, King, 1 plus, Weller, 20 plus, that'll get 248. Um, so all those players obviously being consistent to start the season. Um, and then Monday, Bowie, 15 plus, Chandler, 1 plus, goal, Taranto, 25 plus, Rioli, 20 plus, 360, as mentioned, all players being consistent. And then last but not least, Nick Dacos, 30 plus, Hill, 1 plus, Shield, 20 plus, and Perkins, 1 plus, that'll get you 275, combining those together. But that is all for this week. Feel free to like, follow, and subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, all the podcasting apps. Um, if you have any questions for this weekend of AFL punting, feel free to reach out and let us know. Thank you again for listening. Good luck for your weekend ahead.